What's up guys, Andrew Bainey here, and I'll be the host for today's video. If you're unfamiliar with me or my content, I have a YouTube channel where I do a lot of extended range guitar related content, mostly using seven, eight, nine string guitars, and sometimes a 10 string guitar, just for a little bit of memes. But I'm most well known for doing tuned down videos where I do basically a compilation of guitar riffs from a certain band and just tune them down. I also do a lot of other things on my channel such as gear reviews, demos, uh, guitar riff evolution videos, pop covers, and a bunch of other stuff. But with all that being said, I am most well known for doing extended range guitar content. So that's what I'm gonna be talking to you guys about today. So today's lesson is geared towards people that are thinking about entering the world of extended range guitars. So for those of you that might not know what an extended range guitar is, that means a seven string guitar, eight string guitar, nine string guitar, and so on. There's a lot of things that people might not know about extended range guitars before going into buying one, or thinking that they might want an eight string guitar when they actually don't want one and they want something like an extended scale guitar. So we're gonna be talking about all of that stuff today. We're gonna to be going over what is the difference between an extended range guitar and an extended scale guitar. And we're also gonna be going over how to decide which extended range or extended scale guitar might be right for you. So before we start anything, I wanna clear up the definition between an extended scale guitar and an extended range guitar, because they're not necessarily the same thing. So the standard scale length on most guitars is either 25 and a half inches or 24.75 inches if you're using like a Gibson scale. So to determine the scale length of a guitar, it is typically measured by going from the end of the nut, which is the thing at the top of the guitar, to the middle of the 12th fret, and then doubling that measurement. So again, for most guitars, it's gonna be 25 and a half inches or 24.75 inches. Now, what an extended scale means is that instead of 25 and a half inches, it is longer, quite simple. So for example, you can get things such as 26 and a half inch scale length, 27 inches, 28 inches, 30 inches, so on and so forth, pretty much anything you could imagine. But the thing that most people don't know is that extended scale length and extended range are not necessarily the same thing. You can get a seven string guitar that's still 25 and a half inch scale length, and you can even get a six string guitar that's up to like 30 inch scale length. And I think that's where a lot of the confusion about extended range guitars comes in. A lot of people think that the only way to tune lower is to get an eight string guitar when that's not actually the case. So essentially, if your scale length is longer than 25 and a half inches, it allows you to tune down easier. So again, you could technically have a six string guitar that has a way longer scale length that you could tune to the exact same tuning as an eight string guitar, just obviously minus two strings. So to give you guys an example of what I'm talking about, here's a six string guitar that I have where the scale length of the lowest string is actually 27 inches. Now, 27 inches is typically the scale length range you would find on like an eight string guitar. So I actually can tune this six string guitar all the way down to a low F, F sharp, or E if I want to. And the low E meaning an octave below a standard six string guitar. So I wanted to get that out of the way first and foremost because once again, most people do not know that there's a difference between the two things. So keep that in mind. In my opinion, the scale length is the absolute most important thing to look out for when considering what you wanna buy as your first extended range or extended scale guitar. The second thing I wanna talk about is choosing how many strings you actually want. So this next section is where it gets a little tricky. This is where you're actually gonna be choosing which guitar might be right for you or which guitar you would wanna go for. There's not really a clear, concise answer, like you don't have to do a seven string guitar, you don't have to do an eight string guitar. There's multiple different ways to achieve the same thing, and this is the area where you should really be paying attention and picking accordingly to what you might actually need. So let's say you've been playing a six string guitar for a really long time, and you've decided that you wanna tune lower. Well, how low do you actually wanna go? Because if you only wanna to go to something like, let's say, drop B or drop A or drop G sharp, and all those tunings are just a half step away from each other, well, you might not actually need a seven string guitar. 
For example, you can definitely tune a six string guitar that's with a standard 25 and a half inch scale length down to drop A or drop G sharp, or maybe even drop G, that might be pushing it a little bit, but you can certainly do it if you just get thicker strings. So this is the area where you wanna maybe stop for a second and consider, do you actually want that seven string or do you just wanna tune lower? Because by tuning lower, all you would actually be sacrificing is the high string. So let's use drop A for example. So you wanna tune to drop A. The standard tuning of a seven string guitar is B standard. So to tune to drop A, all you have to do is drop the low B to an A, which is just a full step down. No big deal. You don't even need new strings for that, easy. But you could also definitely tune to drop A on a six string guitar with a 25 and a half inch scale length because that scale length would still be totally fine at that tuning. You would need slightly thicker strings because it's not longer, but you can still definitely do it. And I would say, in my opinion, you can probably get down to like about the G sharp or G range on its standard 25 and a half inch scale length. So again, if you just want to tune lower, if you're just going to like G, G sharp, A, or approximately that area, you might not need a new guitar, you might just need a new set of strings that are way thicker and just throw them on your existing six string and you're probably good to go. Now let's talk about even lower. Let's say you want to go to F sharp, F, or E. Now the standard guitar tuning for an eight string guitar is F sharp standard. So obviously the easiest way to get there would just technically be to buy an eight string because it's already in that tuning. However, if you don't actually need all eight strings, again, you can definitely tune that low on a six or seven string guitar if they have an appropriate scale length. For this tuning range, again, being like F sharp to E approximately, I would definitely recommend getting something around the 27 inch scale length range. You can probably get away with it at a 26 and a half inch scale length, but it might get a little worrisome around E. Um, again, E being an octave below a standard six string guitar. It's doable, but once again, you'll need quite a bit thicker strings to accomplish that and you could potentially run into intonation issues. So I would definitely stick around the F sharp to E area um, if you're using a 26 and a half inch scale guitar. If you're using 27 inch, that should be no problem. You could maybe even push it even farther to like D sharp or D. Again, even lower than the drop E tuning that I was mentioning earlier. So I know this is a lot of information and a lot of weird numbers and weird tunings that you might not be used to hearing, but the whole point of this segment is to teach you guys about scale length and what guitar might be right for you. So I figured that this would be valuable information. So once again, do you really need that eight string guitar? Do you really need that seven string guitar? Or would you rather just keep your existing six string guitar and just tune lower? That's an, always an option. You might not need a new guitar, even though I know it's always fun buying a new guitar. As you can see, I have too many as it is, but I still am very guilty of this. And of course, it all comes down to your personal preference in the end. I personally like playing an eight string guitar, even though I definitely don't use all eight strings almost ever. Usually I'm sticking around the low five strings. So technically, yeah, I could probably just get a weird six string guitar and do that. But I find myself wanting to grab an eight string anyways, just because I kind of like the aesthetic, the look and the feel of an eight string. But again, the whole purpose of this segment is to teach you some tools that might be useful when buying a new guitar or just using your pre-existing guitar. The next thing that I want to cover is something called fan fret guitars. So what a fan fret guitar is where a guitar has multiple scale lengths. So this actually might be even more confusing, but it's basically if you've ever seen a guitar that looks like it has crooked frets, that would be called fan frets or multi-scale guitar. So essentially the idea behind a fan fret or multi-scale instrument is again that you can have multiple different scale lengths on one instrument. So I have this eight string guitar here, for example, where as you can notice, it fans out as the strings get lower. So on the top high E string, it's actually 25 and a half inch scale length, which again, if you go back to the beginning of the video, is the standard scale length for most six string guitars. But as it gets lower, the scale length gradually increases. And then by the eighth string, it goes up to 27 inches. Now, this is beneficial in terms of string tension because as you make your scale length longer, the higher strings actually become more tense and a little bit harder to play, but the low strings benefit from it greatly by being a longer scale length because then you don't need to buy ridiculously thick strings to get the same good sounding tone and the low notes that you want. Now with a fan fret instrument, this is kind of the best of both worlds where your high strings are still a standard scale length such as 25 and a half inches 
and your low scale length is way longer. So it kind of gives you that balanced tension and it just will feel a lot better because you know your high strings won't be super tight and your low strings won't be super wobbly or vice versa. Now the problem with fan fret instruments is they are usually quite a bit more expensive. They're not super mainstream just yet. However, there are more options than ever before. I don't think I've ever seen a fan fret instrument that's like less than maybe like five or six hundred dollars Canadian. Um, that's usually about the price of a low end fan fret instrument, so it's quite a bit more expensive than like a cheap eight string, for example. But the benefits are potentially worth it. But with that saying, fan fret instruments do come with a negative, and that is the pickups. Now these pickups are awesome, but they had to be custom ordered because, as you notice, the pickups are also slanted. So this could potentially be a problem for you because if you get a fan fret instrument and you don't like the pickups, it's going to be very, very hard and very costly to replace the pickups because your options are going to be very limited and you'll probably end up having to go with like a custom shop option, which is obviously much more expensive than just getting some like off the shelf pickup that you can get anywhere. So I just wanted to point that out so you can keep that in mind. So if you're going to go for fan fret, keep in mind that whatever pickups you choose in the beginning, are probably going to be the ones you're going to stick with unless you really want to shell out a ton of money to get something else. It's not impossible, it's just more costly. That's all I'm trying to say. But other than the potential pickup problem, assuming you like your pickups, everything else about having a fan fret instrument, in my opinion, is kind of the best of both worlds. As I was saying, it's super nice to have that even balanced tension. And this is kind of a side effect, but it actually is kind of nice to play a fan fret instrument because it kind of matches the natural curve of your hand as you go up and down the neck of the instrument. Because if you notice your hand isn't like straight all the time, you know, when you get up here, your hand naturally curves that way. And when you get down here, your hand naturally curves that way. And the fan frets, depending on the angle, can actually kind of assist with that. And I've heard of some people with having like tendonitis where they say that playing a fan fret instrument is actually super beneficial to them. So that's another thing to potentially keep in mind when looking for a new instrument. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this lesson. I know this wasn't about guitar playing or theory or anything like that, but there's a lot of confusion out there about extended range instruments, and I thought it would help to clear a little bit of that up. So I really hope you guys found this useful. If you did, definitely give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Guitar Lessons for more content like this. If you liked me and wanna see more about what I do, definitely go check my channel out as well. It's just my name which is Andrew Baina. You can find that in the description below or on the cards on the screen right about now. Also, be sure to let me know in the comments below if you found this video helpful, if you want to see more content about extended range guitars or anything like that. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.